If you're over 60 and taking creatine, or even just thinking about it, this video could save you a lot of confusion and frustration. Creatine can be incredibly helpful as we age, especially for maintaining muscle strength, supporting daily energy, and improving overall physical performance. As we get older, preserving muscle mass becomes more important for balance, independence, and quality of life, and creatine can play a valuable role in that process. However, there are some unfortunate side effects that tend to show up more often after age 60, and almost nobody explains them clearly. When these effects aren't understood, many people assume something is wrong or that creatine is unsafe for them. The good news is that most of these side effects are not dangerous. They're usually related to hydration, dosage, digestion, or how the body responds as metabolism and recovery change with age. Unfortunately, misunderstanding these effects often leads people to quit creatine too early or use it incorrectly, missing out on its real benefits. That's where confusion and frustration come in. Instead of helping, creatine starts to feel like a problem, but it doesn't have to be that way. With the right information and a few simple adjustments, creatine can be used safely and effectively even after 60. In this video, we're going to break down the unfortunate side effects of creatine that are more common as we age and explain what's actually happening inside the body. The goal isn't to scare you away from creatine, but to help you understand it better. When you know what to expect and how to adjust, creatine becomes a useful tool rather than a source of stress. Let's break it down so you can use creatine smarter, not scarier. But before we begin, drop your name and the city you're watching from in the comments below. We read and reply to every single comment. Now, without any further ado, let's start with number 7, and this one will surprise you. Number 7. The scale goes up. The first shock usually happens in the bathroom. You step on the scale, and suddenly the number is higher than you expected. For many people over 60, that moment can feel alarming, especially if weight gain has always been something you've worked hard to avoid. Seeing the scale go up can trigger worry, frustration, or even panic, and the immediate thought is often, something is wrong. But in most cases, this increase is not fat gain at all. What's happening is that creatine is pulling water into your muscle cells, which helps them stay stronger, fuller, and better hydrated. This is actually one of the ways creatine supports muscle preservation as we age. Muscles that are well hydrated tend to function better, recover more easily, and maintain strength more effectively. The problem isn't the weight itself, it's how we interpret it. Many people let the scale convince them that creatine is causing harm, so they cut calories aggressively, stop taking the supplement, or change routines too quickly. That reaction can be far more damaging than the extra weight ever was. After 60, preserving muscle is critical for balance, mobility, and independence. Creatine can help with that, but only if you give it time to work. The scale, however, doesn't tell the full story. It doesn't show where the weight is coming from, how your strength is improving, or how your body is functioning day to day. A slight increase in scale weight paired with better energy, improved strength, or easier movement is often a positive sign, not a negative one. Instead of focusing on daily scale readings, it's more helpful to look at long-term trends and functional improvements. How do your clothes fit? Are you feeling steadier on your feet? Are everyday tasks feeling a bit easier? These markers matter far more than a number on the scale. The real side effect of creatine after 60 isn't the weight gain. It's letting the scale scare you into stopping something that may actually be helping protect your muscles and support healthy aging. Number 6. Digestive discomfort shows up faster. Your stomach might complain before your muscles thank you, and this is something many people over 60 experience when they start taking creatine. As we age, digestion often becomes more sensitive, the stomach empties more slowly, the gut can react more strongly to changes, and what once felt fine at a younger age may now cause discomfort. When creatine is taken in large doses or through aggressive loading phases, that sensitivity can show up as bloating, gas, cramping, or general stomach upset. This is usually when people assume creatine just doesn't agree with them. In reality, creatine itself isn't the problem. The way it's being taken is. 
Large, single doses can sit in the digestive tract and pull water into the intestines, which leads to that uncomfortable gassy feeling. This doesn't mean creatine is unsafe or unsuitable after 60, it simply means the body responds better to a gentler approach. Smaller daily doses are far easier on the gut and still provide the same long-term benefits. For most older adults, taking 3 grams per day, or even splitting that amount into two smaller servings, is more than enough to slowly saturate the muscles without stressing digestion. Over time, the muscles still receive the creatine they need to support strength, energy, and recovery. The key is patience. Creatine is not a quick-fix supplement. It works gradually. Many people are surprised to find that once they lower the dose and stay consistent, stomach issues disappear completely. Another helpful strategy is taking creatine with food and plenty of water, which can further reduce digestive discomfort. When digestion feels comfortable, consistency becomes much easier, and that's when creatine truly starts to help. The goal after 60 isn't to rush results, it's to support the body in a way that feels sustainable. If your stomach is uncomfortable, listen to it. Adjust the dose, slow things down, and give your muscles time to benefit. When taken correctly, creatine can support strength and function without upsetting your gut. Number 5. You don't feel it right away. If you expect instant results, disappointment comes fast, especially with creatine. Many people assume that once they start taking it, they'll immediately feel a surge of energy or strength, similar to how caffeine works. But creatine doesn't work that way at all. It's not a stimulant, and it doesn't create a sudden boost you can feel right after taking it. Instead, creatine works quietly and gradually, slowly building up inside the muscles over time. For most people, this process takes anywhere from one to three weeks of consistent daily use. During that period, it's very common, especially for older adults, to feel like nothing is happening. Because there's no obvious immediate effect, many people assume the supplement isn't doing anything and decide to stop taking it. This is where the real unfortunate side effect appears. Impatience. Quitting too early often means stopping right before the benefits begin to show. As muscle creatine levels rise, strength tends to improve slightly, movements feel more stable, and endurance during daily activities can increase. Balance and recovery may also improve, but these changes are often subtle at first. They build gradually, not dramatically. After 60, progress tends to be slower than it was years ago, and that can make patience even harder. But slow progress doesn't mean no progress. Creatine supports the muscles at a cellular level, helping them produce energy more efficiently during effort. That support becomes noticeable only after consistent use. Another reason people quit early is comparing themselves to younger users or online stories promising rapid results. Those comparisons create unrealistic expectations and lead to frustration. The truth is, creatine is most effective when viewed as a long-term support tool, not a quick fix. Sticking with it for a few weeks while maintaining regular movement and strength exercises gives your body the time it needs to respond. The unfortunate side effect isn't a physical reaction, it's giving up too soon and missing out on improvements that were just around the corner. Number 4. Hydration becomes more important than ever. Feeling tired or crampy after starting creatine can be frustrating, and it often leads people to assume the supplement is the problem. But in many cases, it's not creatine at all. Creatine changes how your body uses water by pulling more fluid into your muscle cells. This helps muscles function better and stay stronger, but it also increases your body's overall need for hydration. If your fluid intake doesn't increase to match this change, symptoms like headaches, muscle cramps, stiffness, or general fatigue can begin to show up. After 60, this issue becomes even more common because the body's natural thirst signals are often weaker and dehydration can happen without you realizing it. When energy drops or muscles start cramping, people often blame creatine and stop taking it. In reality, the real issue is usually not drinking enough water. Creatine itself does not cause dehydration. Instead, it exposes hydration habits that may have been borderline even before supplementation. 
as water is shifted into the muscles, the rest of the body can feel slightly short on fluids if intake stays the same. This can affect circulation, energy levels, and muscle relaxation, leading to that tired or crampy feeling. Another factor is that many people rely on coffee, tea, or other caffeinated drinks throughout the day, assuming they count as hydration. While these drinks do provide fluid, they can also increase fluid loss, especially when intake is high. Combined with creatine, this can make dehydration symptoms more noticeable. The solution is simple, but often overlooked. Drink water consistently throughout the day, not just around exercise. Small, regular sips are often more effective than trying to drink a large amount all at once. Many older adults notice that once hydration improves, headaches disappear, cramps ease, and energy levels feel more stable. Creatine starts to feel smoother and more beneficial instead of uncomfortable. The key takeaway is this. If you feel tired or crampy while taking creatine, don't assume something is wrong with the supplement. Check your water intake first. In many cases, improving hydration is all it takes to feel better and continue benefiting from creatine safely after 60. Number 3. Blood Test Confusion can cause unnecessary fear. Lab results can look scary without the right context, especially after 60 when health monitoring becomes more frequent. One common situation that causes unnecessary worry is seeing elevated creatinine levels on a blood test after starting creatine. Creatinine is a waste product that doctors use as one of the markers to assess kidney function. Because creatine naturally breaks down into creatinine in the body, supplementing with creatine can raise creatinine levels slightly. For someone who isn't aware of this connection, the lab result can look alarming and immediately raise concerns about kidney health. However, an increase in creatinine does not automatically mean kidney damage, especially in otherwise healthy individuals. The problem is not the supplement itself, but how the results are interpreted. If your doctor doesn't know you're taking creatine, they may assume the rise in creatinine is coming from reduced kidney function rather than supplementation. This can lead to unnecessary stress, repeat testing, or even being told to stop creatine without a clear reason. In this case, the real side effect isn't physical harm. It's confusion. Clear communication makes a huge difference. Always tell your healthcare provider about any supplements you're taking, including creatine, especially before blood work. This allows them to interpret results accurately and consider the full picture of your health. In some cases, doctors may choose to use additional tests or look at trends over time rather than reacting to a single number. For older adults, this is especially important because lab values can naturally change with age, muscle mass, hydration levels, and activity. Creatine can still be used safely by many people over 60, but it should be done transparently and responsibly. When everyone has the right information, lab results make more sense, unnecessary fear is avoided, and better decisions are made. The key takeaway is simple. Lab numbers don't tell the whole story on their own. Context matters, and honest communication about supplements helps ensure those numbers are understood correctly. Number two, feeling stronger can lead to overdoing. Its strength often improves faster than joints can keep up, and this is an important reality to understand, especially after 60. Creatine can help muscles produce energy more efficiently, allowing you to feel stronger, push harder, and perform better during exercise. That increased strength can feel motivating and exciting, especially if you haven't felt that kind of power in a long time. However, muscles are not the only tissues involved in movement. Tendons, ligaments, and joints play a huge role, and unlike muscles, they adapt more slowly, particularly as we age. This mismatch can sometimes lead to problems. When strength increases quickly, some people get tempted to lift heavier weights, increase volume, or train more frequently without giving their joints enough time to adjust. The result can be joint soreness, tendon irritation, stiffness, or minor injuries that could have been avoided. Creatine isn't causing damage, but it can highlight this imbalance by allowing muscles to outperform the supporting structures. Feeling stronger doesn't mean your joints are suddenly ready for anything. Warm-ups, mobility work, 
and proper recovery become even more important, not less. Skipping these basics because you feel good is a common mistake. A thorough warm-up prepares joints and connective tissue for load, while mobility work helps maintain range of motion and reduce stiffness. Recovery days allow tendons time to adapt and repair, which is essential for long-term progress. Another factor is that pain signals may be subtle at first. Minor aches can be easy to ignore when strength is improving, but over time those small signals can turn into bigger issues if they're dismissed. The smart approach is to increase intensity gradually, even if your muscles feel capable of more. Progressing slowly may feel conservative, but it's actually the fastest way to stay consistent and injury-free. Creatine can be a great tool for maintaining strength and independence as we age, but it should be paired with patience and smart training habits. Strong muscles are valuable, but healthy joints are what allow you to keep using them. Respecting that balance ensures progress without setbacks. Number 1. Expecting creatine to fix everything. This is the biggest one of all, and it's the mistake that causes the most disappointment. Creatine is powerful, but it's not magic, especially after 60. Many people start taking it, hoping it will fix low energy, weak muscles, or slow progress on its own. But, if sleep is inconsistent, nutrition is poor, movement is limited, and recovery is ignored, creatine simply can't do what people expect it to do. Supplements work best when the basics are already in place. Without that foundation, creatine feels underwhelming and people assume it doesn't work. In reality, the real side effect is unrealistic expectations. After 60, the body needs more support, not shortcuts. Sleep becomes more important for muscle repair and hormone balance. Nutrition plays a huge role in maintaining muscle mass, bone health, and energy levels. Regular movement keeps joints mobile, improves circulation, and supports balance. Recovery time becomes essential, not optional. Creatine can support all of these processes by helping muscles perform better and recover more efficiently, but it cannot replace them. Another issue is comparing results to younger people or to social media promises. Those comparisons create false expectations and lead to frustration. Progress after 60 is often slower, but it's still meaningful. Small improvements in strength, stability, or endurance can make a big difference in daily life. When creatine is used correctly, alongside good sleep, proper nutrition, regular movement, and adequate recovery, it becomes a valuable tool for healthy aging. It helps support muscle function, preserve strength, and maintain independence. But when it's treated like a solution instead of a support, disappointment is almost guaranteed. The smartest approach is to view creatine as part of a bigger picture. Focus on building healthy habits first, then let creatine enhance them. Used this way, creatine doesn't promise miracles, but it can support steady, sustainable progress that truly matters as you age. Bottom line, creatine isn't something to fear after 60. In fact, it's one of the most researched and potentially helpful supplements for maintaining strength independence, and quality of life. The key is understanding these side effects so they don't turn into unnecessary roadblocks. Now I want to hear from you. Are you over 60 and using creatine or thinking about it? Do you want a follow-up video on creatine dosage for seniors, kidney myths, or how beginners should take it safely? Drop a comment, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.